Leboris Oshoma is a lawyer and a public and social affairs commentator. He joins us now from Lagos in Nigeria. Uh, Debbie was one of the Africa's longest serving leaders. What are the implications of his sudden death for the country as well as the region as he was seen as a Western ally? Um, there are uh, grave um, implications, not just for Chad, but for Nigerian and the fight against insurgency also. Uh, because of um, his um, contribution to the fight against insurgency uh, from um, uh, the region, uh, the Nigerian army had been able to record um, some of the successes that they recorded, you know, because, um, you know, of his um, it's a, a strong army. Uh, and um, he's been the one who uh, successful, successfully led the battle, you know, against uh, militancy and insurgency, terrorism, in not just in his country, and who have been able to hold down um, uh, terrorism against, you know, that country. So, and then uh, now that um, with his demise, uh, especially, you know, uh, as it's reported in the war front, uh, the insurgency will not have to, the terrorists will not have to bother about um, their plans uh, any longer. And so, uh, for the first time in a long while, they might, um, you know, you know, have a strong base now from that region to be able to launch attack, you know, in um, the northeast of um, Nigeria. Especially, uh, one would have also, one would hope that um, his son, uh, who also is a general, 37 years old, um, you know, son who's also a general, one would expect that um, he would also, you know, be able to, uh, you know, uh, deploy the kind of force used by his father. But I doubt if that would happen. But, um, the few weeks from now will actually tell you know, what to expect. But I think um, it is a great, you know, um, a sad one for the fight against terrorism in the region. Are you concerned at all about the possibility of a smooth transition of power? There are supposed to be elections after 18 months, but does that concern you at all? Yeah, um, I doubt. Uh, because uh, even um, uh, Idris Deby, right from the time he took over, you know, about 30 years ago, even all the elections that have been held, you know, largely apart from the first election in 1996, um, the opposition had boycotted most of the election, and then um, dissenting voices had, um, you know, strongly been held down in that country. And most times, where there are protests, you hear that internet has shut down. So even the, the transition that had been promised by the transition council, I doubt um, if it would be a smooth one. Um, especially if anything that uh, we hear is coming from the country is anything to go by. I, I very much doubt if that transition will be smooth. It will be different from what has been happening with um, Idris, Idris Debbie's uh, kind of election. Who might likely fill the vacuum that Debbie's death leaves? Um, we already seen his son, um, you know, uh, taking over. Immediately that happened, we saw that uh, his son was named uh, as uh, the head of the transition committee. Um, we see that happen with um, uh, uh, Pure in Togo. We also saw that happen in uh, with Lawrence Babo. You know, so I really don't see any departure from from um, uh, you know all of those uh, precedents have been set in some part of Africa. I don't see that also you know uh, happening differently in terms of what is happening in Chad. So I, I see. Also, his son quickly consolidating his hold on power. And I would also, you know, expect that he would also transit from a military ruler to a civilian president, just like his father. And so that's why I do not expect a departure from, uh, you know, uh, what has been happening in terms of, of, of transition. You know, because uh, his son is not the highest uh, uh, ranking military officer in the country. But to quickly name him as uh, the head of the transition uh, council, you know, raise a serious question as, um, you know, regards, you know, a genuine and fair transition. Okay, we'll leave it there. Laboris Oshoma in Lagos, thank you so much.